Thank you again, Paul. Again, great pleasure to be here also to talk about uh, thyroid and salivary gland application by means of COS. Firstly, we have to ask why we have to use COS in this kind of field. All of us know that ultrasound is very capable to detect even very small, tiny lesions in thyroid. However, how much accurate it is how many fine needle aspiration that is still considered gold standard nowadays we are doing because uh, if on one side we detect very tiny lesions on the other side how many fine needle aspiration we do how many unnecessary surgical treatment we ask for this kind of patients and then this kind of patients usually are very young for how many years should we follow up in this Clinical scenario, we have to understand ultrasound role, COS, elastography, fine needle aspiration role. What about ultrasound? I report to you this table from the paper from Ragon Bitti, in which they tried to assess the potential role of elastography in tire nodal differentiation. The background was based on the fact that ultrasound is not too much accurate as expected. If you see the numbers of the, ra the range of the numbers of literature, sensitivity and specificity, the numbers are very variable. And they concluded that unfortunately, although very sensitive, it is variably accurate. We also reported our experience on color Doppler. Because at the beginning, when we started to use color Doppler, we were, we had in our mind very promising results. However, these were not cons co consistent with the real life. Then, some authors, Orvart was the first, tried to group together all the ultrasound features in order to provide what is called tirads. Tirads is a system, a reporting system, in which all the different uh, ultrasound features are put together to try to provide a possible risk of malignancy of these patients. From that point, other authors provided their classifications. One of the most used is the Korean one provided by WAC. I showed you in this table all the different features that they take in consideration to try to provide the risk assessment. However, still too many fine needle aspiration. But what about fine needle aspiration? When we do first try of fine needle aspiration in literature, sensitivity is reported no more than 90%, which increases to 95 after second try, and then even more after third try. But how many fine needle aspiration should we do? Therefore, CUS, contrasenance ultrasound, appeared in the market and then was used in different fields and also in thyroid. I showed you some experiences published in literature. One is from Tommaso Bartolotta, paper published in European Radiology. He tried to assess the value of qualitative and quantitative evaluation of COS, entire nodal uh, differentiation. The results were quite good, and he concluded that this kind of examination should be considered promising. But what about techniques, and which are the parameters that we use every day to try to characterize those nodules? About the dosage in literature, there is a great variability. In our previous guidelines, still 4.8 milliliter was considered to be recommended. Nowadays, with new equipment, which are more sophisticated, more sensitive to microbubble detection, we may also reduce the amount of a contrast agent that should be followed by bolus of saline flash, as in the other application. Then we do real-time evaluation and post-processing evaluation. This may help us to allow to do qualitative and quantitative evaluation, which are the qualitative parameters. Together with Maya Regina, 
and uh, Fabrizio Caldiada, we are working together to try to provide the update of the guidelines in this field. And we reached and looked at the literature to find out all the different parameters that have been described. So you can have the, des the description of vascular pattern, or you may use the quantitative parameters in order to try to achieve better results. Let's see an example. This nodule was characterized as type 3 at fine needle aspiration, so it needs follow-up. Some vessel at power Doppler, then we injected contrast agent. In real time, you could see how nicely you can depict the vascularization during the early phase. And then the maintenance and the consistency with the surrounding parenchyma. This is a freezing imaging. And then you can also do quantitative analysis. Again, different softwares, internal or external. At the end, you can achieve different parameters. And then you can evaluate in post-processing. If you look to other paper present in literature, NEMEC confirmed good results as reported by Tommaso Bartolotta, stating that quantitative evaluation is more objective than qualitative one. But looking again to the literature, some meta-analyses are appearing. The first one that I would like to show you from you what is important to point out, Chinese are very active in this field because of the great and tremendous incidence of Tyrian nodule in their country. They put together, they evaluate literature, they assess seven studies, they did their meta-analysis, and they showed results which were just a bit more than 80% of sensitivity and specificity, and concluded confirming promising results as reported by Bartolotta and Nemec before. Again, we did look even farther to the literature. We included other meta-analysis, other studies. What was clear that we may achieve better results if we put together some parameters. One could be, in order to do diagnosis of benign nodule, the rim-like enhancement. But parallelly, another ultrasound technique is emerging, like ultrasound elastography. Some authors started to try to understand, if I compare CUS with the ultrasound elastography, which kind of results could I achieve? <coughs> Friede Cruz was the first one. She tested qualitative elastography by means of strain elastography, so far compressive technique with quantitative evaluation by means of software applied to CUS evaluation. And uh, the sensitivity was better by using elastography than CUS. If you look at another paper published by Giusti, in which they analyzed uh, TI3. TI3 means indeterminate nodules. So the ones that are more worrisome to be malignant, but are not conclusive at fine needle aspiration. And uh, they also concluded that elastography would provide better results than CUS, especially if combined with ultrasound in order to classify those nodules. Also our group did a study in this field and uh, we presented uh, at RSNA, then we published in European Journal of Radiology. We studied 88 patients after injection of 2.4 milliliter of contrast agent. We did the qualitative analysis by means of CUS and compared it with Q elastography, which means strain ratio based elastography, semi quantitative one. The results showed better sensitivity of ultrasound elastography and quite better specificity of CUS. Let's see an example. Small tire nodule 
hyperechoic with irregular halocyne, highly vascularized the color Doppler, but soft at strain ratio evaluation with a number which was less than two. Then we injected contrast agent, homogeneous enhancement, and persistent enhancement also during the late phase. <coughs> Other case, this was a proven malignant nodule. This is uh, characterized by multiple calcification within it. And then elastography showed uh, so, uh, stiff lesion. And after the injection of contrast agent, the lesion showed no enhancement during the whole vascular phases. Other case, lesion is here, then here is better de delineated, and the lesion, which was at fine needle aspiration type 3B, was a benign lesion at histology. And also, quantitative software showed similar appearance comparing with uh, surrounding thyroid parenchyma. First conclusion, COS is capable to provide micro and macrovascularization and may allow to us to do qualitative and quantitative evaluation. Malignancy findings are absence of vascularization, incomplete ring enhancement, heterogeneous enhancement, late washout, earlier arrival time enhancement, higher and faster peak enhancement. But to now, in the previous guidelines, no recommendation was provide, were provided. According to personal experience, but also based on updated literature reports, we can suggest to use CUS in the multi-parametric evaluation of thyroid nodules. And also, we probably, we believe that could have a good role in order to evaluate before and after treatment by means of RFA, cryoablation, or other non-invasive treatment. Let's move on to salivary gland evaluation. We know that salivary gland tumors represent an incidence of one to five cases per 100,000 people per year. They represent two to six percent of the neoplasm of the head and neck. Parotid gland is the most frequently affected uh, gland. Risk factors are largely unknown and usually multifactorial. We may describe benign from malignant tumors and uh, we will describe uh, singularly some of them. Pleomorphic adenoma is up to 75% of all uh, parotid tumors. has a slightly <laughs> female prevalence, usually occur in fifth decade, and 5% of them may undergo to malignant transformation. Wharton tumor, also called papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum, is up to 10% of all tumors with the male prevalence, mostly occurring in sixth decade, sometimes bilateral and multicentric. Carcinoma may represent up to 10% of all parotid tumors, and they may appear throughout all adult age, most commonly in middle age. The most common type is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. How do we study this kind of patients? By means of linear probe with low MI, one vial sonovir, second generation contrast agent, or fractionated body. Some authors, especially in order to evaluate COGRAN disease, also suggest to do intraductal injection. We recently published an updated review of the literature, and we tried to provide all the features described in literature. Looking at qualitative evaluation, when you look, when you deal with a malignant lesion, you may achieve chaotic vessel formation with increased enhancement with COS. Strong but organized vessel formation with slight enhancement and washout. Pleomorphic adenomas 
shows light vessel identification with poor perfusion, while Wharton's tumors is characterized by strong enhancement with very late washout. By means of quantitative features, you can achieve area under curve and mean transit time values which are higher in malignant compared with benign. <coughs> also, to be pointed out, in warting tumor, you may detect intratumor attempt to peak that is markedly longer. Therefore, we summarized strong criteria, putting together CUS, ultrasound, elastography, and compared with MRI. Nowadays, ultrasound could be considered first-line examination. You have different weapons, use all of them according to your availability and to your experience. And then, when the lesion is unconclusive, you may do MRI and then find needle aspiration. Let's move on to evaluate single different lesions, such as pleomorphic adenoma. At baseline ultrasound, it appears hypechoic, well-defined, lobulated lesions with posterior acoustic enhancement. At color Doppler and CUS, you do not detect strong enhancement. Sometimes, if they are long-standing and big, they may appear heterogeneous with cystic degeneration. I will not go through MRI appearance because it is out of the intent and the purpose of this lecture. But I will show you this case. Big lesion, hypochoic, some acoustic posterior enhancement, some vessel at power Doppler, and then we injected contrast agent. And you see some vessel <coughs> within the lesion, but not strong enhancement. And again, just to reveal this tiny vessel within the lesion. MRI confirmed diagnosis with typical feature. Other lesion, smaller, and you see that CUS may achieve better results to detect vascularization of this lesion that is still not too much vascularized. What about Wharton's tumor? Wharton usually appear as a rounded, lobulated, hypochoic masses with rich vascularization. Sometimes may show internal cystic areas, and also cystic degeneration may be possible. And in this case, it is not easy to discriminate warting from pleomorphic adenoma. But let's see an example. This hypochoic, mildly heterogeneous lesion, oval-shaped, we did power, then superb microvascular <coughs> image evaluation that showed already that the lesion was highly vascularized. But then we injected contrast agent and you see how nicely and markedly and then homogeneously the lesion is vascularized. Again, to prove it and to be more objective and to evaluate in the follow-up these kind of lesions, you can use uh, quantitative perfusional technique. And again, MRI confirmed those parameters and the diagnosis. What about hemangioma? Hemangioma and lipoma are the two lesions that when you deal with, you do diagnosis directly with ultrasound, but you may achieve better results, especially in pictoric evaluation by using CUS. This hypochoic oval-shaped lesion, which showed also flabolite, then we injected contrast agent, the time is going on, and the vascularization started with typical globular, peripheral, progressive enhancement. And the lesion at the, at the end of the examination was completely fulfilled by, by contrast agent. Again, you may achieve better and objective results by using quantitative time-intensive quantitative analysis, and again, the confirmation that was pro pro provided by MRI. What about malignant lesions? Usually, they may have, depending on the grade of differentiation, different uh, 
appearance, but when they are typical, they appear fairly marginated, hypoechoic, infiltrative, with possibly some lymphadenopathy around. And what about the vascularization? Color Doppler showed some vessel within the lesion, but if you inject contrast agent, you see how heterogeneous is the vascularization, but intense. And then, how much faster is the washout? And again, the confirmation at MRI. Coming to the conclusion, ultrasound and MRI are effective technique to detect a lesion. Sometimes they may not achieve a complete differentiation of the lesion, especially when the lesions are atypical. However, when you combine ultrasound, you put together CUS, you include elastography, you may do the multiparametric evaluation. What should be taken as the home point? CUS shows hypervascularization with washout in malignant lesions. However, taking account that warting tumor also are hypervascularized, but more homogeneously. Wartin more, is more vascularized than pleomorphic adenoma. And this is very useful, especially in the cases in which in baseline ultrasound, and sometimes also at fine needle aspiration, you were not able to discriminate those lesions. And I suggest also to read soon, when the, it will be published, this paper that is impressed in a European Journal of Ultrasound, in which we try to do a CME paper also together with Paul, in order to provide all this information and also to guide the reader to understand how to use all the different ultrasound technique to achieve better results. And since time is always going too fast, I thank you so much showing you also a nice but old picture of my beautiful Rome. And I thank you so much for your kind attention.